Welcome, dear friends, fans, and fellow aficionados of leadership excellence. Thank you for joining us here on this episode of Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives, part of the Full Monty interview series, where today we will look at what it takes to be the most focused, disciplined, and productive leader that you can be. I'm your host, Dov Barron, founder of FullMontyLeadership.com, and one of Inc. Magazine's top 100 leadership speakers to hire, executive mentor, entrepreneur magazine contributor, and international business speaker. If you're a new listener, new viewer to the show, strap yourself in, we're about to go full Monty. If you're a regular, big thank you to you for being one of our over 1.5 million downloads, making us the number one podcast for Fortune 500 listeners and consistently keeping us at the top in family business and next-gen leadership and a whole bunch of other categories. Thank you for sharing the show with everybody that you know. Remember, we always need your help in staying relevant. So please go to iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe to the show. All right, let's strip it down and dive right in. Watching and listening to this show, you're a high-level executive, an entrepreneur, or a leader in some capacity. And as a leader... In any of those forms, we face the pull of more and more distractions every single day. So how can you, with all the emails, the texts, the messages, people that you lead who want your time, projects, deadlines, how can, how can you possibly stay focused, disciplined, and productive? Well, you're in for a treat. Because today, let me tell you, I've been in this, uh, I've been podcasting for eight years, which makes me really <laughs> an old timer in this world. However, time is one thing, being the champ is a whole other. My guest today is a master at focused discipline and production. He, a productivity, he is a superstar of the podcast world who has taken podcasting to a whole nubber level and turned it into a multi-million dollar business, John Lee Dumas. Is the host of Entrepreneur on Fire. If you haven't heard of it, I think you must have been living under a rock because he interviews some of the most successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. People like, I don't know, you might have heard of him. What was his guy's name? Uh, oh, Tony Robbins, <laughs> uh, Dan Cushell, Michael Hyatt, my mate Sue McCarn, also a Canadian, um, my mate Kevin Cruz, Suzanne Evans, and this other guy, what was his name now? Weird name. Uh, oh, Dolph Barron, that's his name. Um, John Lee Dumas has grown Entrepreneur on Fire into a multi-million dollar a year business with over 150, uh, 1,500 1, interviews and 1.5 million listeners every show. This latest project, his latest project is called The Mastery Journal, Master Productivity, Discipline and Focus in 100 Days. You can learn more about it at themasteryjournal.com. So please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome our guest, Mr. John Lee Dumas. And the crowd goes wild. That was just me. That was just me, Jerry. That was just you. You just like can move very fast. Good to have you on here, John. Thanks for joining us, mate. Dove, I'm fired up to be here. I just live, live, I just love living in this world that we're here today where I'm in Puerto Rico and we're able to speak to people all over the world with this thing called the internet. So man, I'm blessed. You're blessed. Let's just have some fun today. Absolutely. So let, let's start here. You, I, I want to sort of backtrack a little bit. You started out, you were a military guy, right? You went from- Yes, I was in- yeah, I was in the U.S. Army for eight years, four active, four in the reserves, did a 13-month tour of duty in Iraq. I was a platoon leader in charge of 16, ta uh, 16 men and four tanks. So it was a pretty intense experience for a 23-year-old to go through. But, you know, in a lot of ways, it uh, made me the man that I am today. So just uh, got to be proud of what I did. So how do you make the, <laughs> the bizarre transition, or it would seem bizarre at least, transition from being platoon leader uh, with eight years in the military to becoming really the number one podcaster, as, as far as I'm concerned. You're, you're right at the top in podcasting. How do you make that choice? That's, that's a big leap, it seems like. Yeah, it's a big leap. It is a bizarre leap. It's a leap that did not come overnight. Um, when I finished with my four years of active duty in the Army, um, I spent really the next six years struggling in different areas. I went to law school, quit, dropped out after one uh, quick semester, tried corporate finance in Boston for a while, 
did real estate on both the East and the West Coast. So I did six years of post-military struggle, trying to find myself, trying to find something that clicked. Nothing did. And it wasn't until I was 32 years old, which was about five years ago now, um, that I started really consuming audio content. Uh, you know, I was listening to podcasts. I was listening to audio books. I was doing whatever I could to try to better myself. And that's where I fell in love with the medium of podcasting. And I said, you know what? There's a niche that is not being filled in the podcasting space right now. Nobody's doing a daily show interviewing the world's most successful and inspiring entrepreneurs seven days a week. I want to be that person that was now over 1,600 episodes ago, over 43 million listens ago. Uh, the show's just taken off, has turned my, sh uh, my business, EO Fire, into a multi-million dollar a year business. And it's just me, my girlfriend, who works with me in the business, and a handful of virtual assistants, and that's the business that we run. So, but, you know, I mean, I think that it's really important that people grasp what you were saying there about this being... That, that was that six year period because I think that everybody sort of comes out. I mean, we God, it's, it's kind of sad that people go to university to do their four years, they get a degree, which is about as useful as a piece of paper, and <laughs> not much more. And and often go, well, that's not really what I want to do anyway. And then they go through this massive struggle around what do I really want to do? And I don't think that people grasp that that is not a for most people at least, is not a quick journey into, oh, I found my passion or I found my purpose. And I, th I think it's really important that you shared that, that that was a six-year journey. Because I think that most people go, oh, I've been trying this for six months. I guess i got to go <laughs> get a job at Walmart or, or working for the man or something. Tell us about what kept you going in that six years because that's a really important piece. <clears throat> Yeah, so those six years were difficult because I finished my four years as, as an active duty officer. So picture me, 26 years old, having kind of gone from success to success. I mean, I'd you know, gone from just high school to college to army. So I was kind of doing all the things you were supposed to do. And then now I'm like, okay, I'm 26. The world is my oyster. Like I can kind of go in any direction I want to. So why not go to like that next level, which is law school? And that was my first kind of real you know, B slap in the face, so to speak, where I realized that, man, life is not going to be simple. Life is not going to be handed to me on a silver platter. Um, I, I am very unhappy, unsuccessful, and just not enjoying this whole lawyer thing. So I'm out of here. And, right. you know, that disappointed a lot of people. Like, my father's a lawyer, so he was like, what are you doing? Like, this is the biggest mistake of your life. Um, you know, so then I was like, don't worry, I'm going to get into corporate finance. But then now I'm in a cubicle looking around, and I'm like, I'm dying this slow, slow, painful death in the cubicle because I just was not meant to sit, you know, in this square box for nine, ten hours a day just making phone calls, which is what the job was. So then I was like, oh, I'm going to break free and go do real estate. But then I realized that that wasn't enjoyable to me either because even when I would lock down a great deal, it was just like it wasn't something that I was excited about. And again, all three of those careers that I just mentioned – they're perfect for certain people and for some people. And if that's you, like, amazing. You're probably not watching the show right now because you're in that cubicle, you know, slaving away. But there no are people that are... No dig there at all. No dig there <laughs> at all. That was so subtle, John. <laughs> there are people that are meant for those. Like, my brother-in-law, he's an amazing commercial real estate broker. He loves it. He's one of the best at, at what he does. And I, I was with him. Like, I was a partner with him, and I saw him just thriving in this job while I was withering and dying. So we yeah. just need to know that it's not going to come overnight. You know, I did not just wake up and say, I'm going to become the number one podcaster in the world. I said, you know, I'm going to go in search of what works for me. It took a long time to find. It took, took a lot of failures, mistakes, uh, you know, unhappiness, depression to, to get there. But when I did find it and I did see what it was like to actually get up excited to do something, then I was like, you know what, this is something to explore. Let me do that. You know, but you said something there that I think <clears throat> that most people don't want to even look at, let alone face. And that is, you said, it was a struggle and there was depression. Yeah. I mean, I mean this is, you know, here's John Lee Dumas, Mr. Up, Mr. You know, <laughs> hey, uh, welcome to EO on fire, you know. But, you know, I mean, I think that people don't realize the humanity. We love to we love to glamorize. I mean, people say to me, you know, you speak all over the world. I do. I get to speak in amazing places. I was at the palace in Scotland. 
uh, last year where they crowned the Scottish prince, uh, Scottish kings. I was speaking in, I was in London. I've spoken in France, in Holland, in in the U.S., in Canada. I mean, I'm in Iran next month. I mean, you know, I get to speak all over the world, and it seems very glamorous. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into making that happen. But more importantly, I think, for people to grasp is that that isn't, oh, I woke up one morning and now I'm a speaker. There's this process that includes the blood, the sweat, the tears, you know, as um, as Gary V says, you know, there's the grind, there's the hustle. And... and Getting past, realizing that it's not glamorous often includes that place of feeling so ground down and depressed that there's a turning point for people. Do you know what that turning point was for you, John? Do you know what it was that, you know, where you're in the, where you're in the depression and you, you, do you know what, what turned that? Because I know it's not on a moment, but I know it, there's usually a catalyst. You know, the best analogy that I can give for that is imagine you're at Thanksgiving dinner and you're so hungry. Um, again, maybe this is better for Americans, but you're at some big holiday feast and you're so hungry. You've been waiting for it. All the food is there. You're so excited and you start eating and it's just it tastes so good. And Doug, that was me, honestly, for law school. Um, I loved the first couple weeks of law school. I was like, this is cool. I'm surrounded by brilliant people. I'm eating the food. Same thing happened to me with uh, corporate finance. I'm wearing a suit and a tie to work. I feel important. I'm looking around. I'm making sales. Um, I'm doing in real estate. I'm driving around. I'm looking at big properties. I'm sitting down at this feast. I'm starving and I'm eating. But then finally, I just get to this point where I'm like, I am so full. I can't eat another bite. In fact, nothing on this table even looks remotely good anymore. I feel disgusting. I'm stuffed. I'm bloated. I feel gross. That's how I got in every one of those jobs quickly. Law school, corporate finance, um, co um, real estate. Like It just got to this point where I was just stuffed of right. the entire table of experiences very quickly. And to me, <clears throat> that's the point where I was like, I, I got to push myself away from the table and I've got to go try something different. And so that's what I just kept doing. And I was willing to do it. Like For me, sitting down and trying podcasting stuff, that was just another feast that I was sitting down at. And I was willing to push back from that table the minute that I was stuffed and over and, and gross and just not feeling it anymore. But guess what? Four and a half years later, 1,600 interviews later, I'm still starving at the table, gobbling up this food. That's when you know you've hit something. So I don't think people should stress out about you know trying to find that perfect thing every single time they start something because you're not going to know until you're in it and living it for a decent amount of time. I didn't know that I was going to love podcasting a year, four years, you know, whatever years into it, but I do. I had to actually just take that first step and start the process. And, and you know, that's great. And, and I think you've said something there that I think that people really need to grasp, and that is this. So I'm going to ask you, you put it in a form of a question. You've been doing this four and a half years, super successful, 1,600 interviews, seven days a week, et cetera, et cetera. So let me ask you. What will happen the moment you fall? And it's going to happen, Doug. Of course. What will happen? Yeah. We live in this world where cycles are everything. I mean, podcasting is on fire right now. It's been so for about four, four and a half years. Like, just very lucky and fortunate for me to happen to be my life cycle at this point. Things are coming up all the time. I mean, think about two years ago, Meerkat was everything. Now, Meerkat, that's, a, that's nothing. Periscope. You know, is on the way down. You know, Snapchat was all the rage, and it's still doing some great things. But man, when Instagram Stories came out, I mean, watch out! Like that's that's a game changer as well. So we have to, as entrepreneurs, always be ready. And for me, that's why I am just committed to doing this, living every single moment of what I'm doing right now, being very smart, frugal, and just intentional with the with the revenue that I'm generating, the money that I'm making. You know, I'm making a lot of money right now, but I'm not living a lifestyle of making a lot of money. Um, my bank account is massive right now because I know that when this this ride stops, that when the music is no longer playing and it's just me standing here, I need to have that war chest to say, okay, 
I'm going to step back. I'm going to regroup. I'm not going to force anything. I don't have to now go, be, you know, be, do something I don't want to do just to bring in revenue. I can take a step back. I can reflect upon where the world is today, how I fit in it, and then start testing some things out. Trying this, that doesn't work. Maybe trying that, but not having to be in a rush, not being forced to do anything. So when the music stops, when you know my ride with EO Fire is over, whether it be one year from now or 50 years from now, like I really don't know anywhere in between, um, it's going to be me taking a step back, taking a deep breath and saying, okay, what's next and not rushing into anything. Yeah. So, you know, I think this is a, <clears throat> a vitally important piece that I think so many people meet, miss, certainly in the entrepreneurship world. <clears throat> they we're all looking for that, 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 that particular trophy. And we think that that, when you get there, you're going to be satisfied. And the answer is you've very well stated. It is the answer for now. That's the point for now. And, and certainly ride it, enjoy it. But I think the most difficult, challenging thing for human beings is to let go of something that was good that no longer works. Because <clears throat> when it did work, yeah, I know, but times have changed. I When I started out speaking, it was 30-odd years ago. You wanted wow. to hear me speak. You paid. You paid for me to fly in or you flew in to see me and you paid for, you know, as a member of the public, you paid 99 bucks 30 odd years ago. Now you want to hear me speak, you go on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> right? And if you'd have told me 30 odd years ago, you're going to give away massive amounts of your content, I'd have said you're a crazy person. But that's how it works. The world has changed. And, and we, we grasp onto what doesn't work. And I, I really love this first part of the show here, John, because I really love that you're waking people up to this idea, to this understanding that it's not instant, you've got to go get your feet wet and put your feet in different water, but you've also, and I think this is what's important, I see people dabble in different things, bless you, I see people dabble in different things, they put their, their, their toe in the water, but you, what your point is, and I think it's a vital import, important point, is you didn't put your foot in the water, you dived right. in with each thing in order to get fully soaked, fully wet, fully in it, swim around in it, and then go, yeah, it's great, but not for me. And right. then you could get out. And I think that that's one of the things that happens. People get entrepreneurial. They go, oh, this is a great idea. They get in, they put the toes in the water, and they don't get the instant the instant rush, or they don't get the wave that they can surf, and they go, oh, I'm out. Well, you didn't even get in the water yet. You didn't even get past your ankles, and you're <laughs> looking to surf? Mate, you've got to fight the waves first. You gotta get out past those waves to point your board in the right direction to be able to surf, and you didn't even get into your knees. Come on. So I think it's a really important piece that you've brought up there. So thank you for that. It's vital, important for entrepreneurs, for leaders in any form. Cool stuff. Let's let's shift on. In your you have partnered, you know, you've made entrepreneur on fire massively successful. But you've also partnered on several projects and, again, on the Mastery Journal. Again, folks, you can find out about the Mastery Journal at themasteryjournal.com. Your, your partner on there is Partners with Pencils, uh, Pencils of Promise. You partnered with Pencils of Promise. Tell us about that. A lot of P's in there. A lot of yeah, P's. So partner, Pencils, yeah. Promise, a lot of P's. Thank God I've got this sponge on here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, first thing I do want to say is I love what you said. I think it's such an important point that I think just one more maybe reiteration of would be a big help. And that is that good is truly in a lot, a lot of circumstances, enemy of great. So many of us get comfortable in what we're doing, whether it be in a cubicle job, whether it be, you know, me with EO Fire, just really being able to hammer out these interviews every single day getting in my comfort zone and just being like, well, do I just stay here? I mean, you know, I'm making a couple hundred thousand dollars a month. I mean, life is good. Like, let's, let's just keep doing this. But like, is that, that's good, but there could be something great out there for me. And so sometimes the good can be the enemy of grace. So just, I think people need to realize that getting out of your comfort zone, that's where all the magic happens. That's really important. Um, but shifting back to, well, just, just hold on, cause I want to say something to that because yeah. I think you made a good point here and I want to, I want to bring it home. And that is, so very clear, good is the enemy of great. But here's what I want you to know as you listen, watch this show. Great becomes good. And you need to remember that. Good is the enemy of great. So you've got to go from good to great. But understand this, when you get to great, John Lee Dumas is great in the podcasting world. Nobody will deny that. He's great. But there's going to come a point where it becomes 
good. And then will be that battle that John just talked about where it's like, oh, this is so good. So, you know, it's been great. And you remember great as if it's present, but it's actually past. And then now great is good. And there's another level. And I think that too often we don't go to that because everybody's looking at us and saying, man, you the man. You, you got it. You're awesome. I wish I was you. And that's so seductive rather than listening to your own heart and your soul that says, no, no, no. There's greatness I got to go to that greatness, even if it means letting go of what was great that's now become good. So thank you. Nailed it. Dove, way to bring it home, brother. That was great. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. So speaking of Pencils of Promise, um, I knew that when I was going to be launching the Mastery Journal, um, that I wanted it to not just be a success, but I wanted to bring significance to the project, to the campaign, to the launch. So to me, going from just being successful to significant is frankly like going from being good to great. Like it's Absolutely. really that combo. And so Absolutely. I wanted to go from just being a success with whatever this campaign is going to end up doing to being very significant with it. So a past guest of mine and now a very good friend, Adam Braun, launched Pencils of Promise a few years ago. And they just do some great things in the world. I'm a big believer in education. Um, and again, not traditional education. I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, going to college is great to drink alcohol and hook up with girls, but that's about it. I'm talking about education, like going to Google and like being able to educate yourself on the world by watching interviews like this, by just learning so much about anything that's at your fingertips. But still, it's it's, it's like second nature to us, people that are watching this, we have that, but millions and potentially you know billions of people don't have access to this stuff around the world. So Pencils of Promise um, helps build schools in developing countries that give people access to this, to the internet, to just the opportunity to learn, to get excited about different things, maybe just outside of their own, whatever they might be, their own little town and places like Ghana and Guatemala, which are two places that they really focus on. So I parted with Pencils of Promise and, and I did the exact same thing last year with the Freedom Journal, um, another launch that I did. And we ended up generating $75,000 in revenue for Pencils of Promise, which built three schools in developing countries. And we're looking to do the exact same thing with the Master General campaign so we can be you know, successful with this campaign, but also bring real significance to this world. Fantastic. You know, um, we are entrepreneurs, we are leaders, we are successful individuals, and of course we're driven to achieve. And, and you know, one of my big things from the platform when I speak is, you know, when you look at your life, you, if you're a leader, you have achievements by virtue of the fact that you're a leader, you must have had achieved. But that, it's not the point. The, the point is, what is the meaningful achievements you've had? So you could launch the Mastery Journal, you can make a lot of profit, you could rave about how successful you were, multi-million dollar business, podcast, etc. But if at the end of the day you can't lie in your bed and go, but we also made a difference, I think that that's what is so often missing. And, and I think we get into a mindset of scarcity and feel like, yeah, but I got to make more money, as you said, build the war chest a bit more. But yeah, but if you leave in your wake nothing that is of value, you're dead in the water, folks. I really want you yeah. to get this. That this is, you know, you know, I'm all about heart and soulful leadership. Yeah, you got to have a great brain. You got to have a great mind. You got to learn how to do your skills brilliantly. But you've also got to be deeply connected to your heart and your soul. And I love that you partnered with. Pencils of Promise for that reason. It's really great. So thank you for that. L let's come to what the um, what the Mastery Journal is about. So productivity, productivity, discipline, and focus in a hundred days. So let's break. Let's let's go into this for everybody because I, I I always my thing is that everything has a subjective meaning. And if you don't articulate the the subjective meaning that you're referencing, people will make up their own. So let's define productivity first so for me productivity is one of the most important things that an entrepreneur can have in his life but also just anybody that's looking to take their life to the next level and whether it's going to be through fitness through nutrition i mean dove you and i were talking beforehand about you know how much we love ketosis and just really figuring that kind of that part of our life out because that's going to help balance us out on everything we need to be productive it can't take up all of our day to do X, Y, or Z. Like we need to focus on what we can do and what we want to do. Mm -hmm. There you go taking a sip of it right there because you're being productive. We're having an interview. 
you're consuming ketones. I just love how you're multitasking. So for me to break down the word productivity, it's the word produce. What are you producing on a daily basis that's a benefit to your business in your life? That's key. So many people, they think they're productive, uh, Dove, because guess what? Maybe they're being very efficient with their time. Maybe they're getting a lot of stuff done. Maybe they're very busy. But then if they are really honest and they look back over the day, they're like, wow, I was all of those things. I was busy. I was efficient with my time. But what did I do that moved my business forward? I mean, I answered, you know, 150 emails. I liked some posts on Facebook. I did, might have done this. But what did I do that's this really, truly of quality work that's moving my business forward? So to me, if you're going to be productive, you are producing quality content that's moving your business forward, period. That's a productive person, and it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah, because I, I think we, you know, we definitely live in a busy world where people are uh, busy um, and they're, they're actually very focused on their busyness rather than their business. And I know how easy it is. I mean, I'm very active on social media. I do all those things and I, you know, I have a team, but I also do a lot of it myself. And, uh, you know, and it's really easy to go, oh, there's an hour gone. The, is, is it helping my brand? Absolutely. So is it productive to my brand? Absolutely it is. But does it build my business? That's a different thing. And I think that that distinction that you're bringing up there is an important, vitally important piece, which is does it, and does it move the piece forward in the game called my business? Um, and you've laid out this mastery journal because I've gone through it, but you've laid it out so that you can actually track that. And I think yes. that's that, <laughs> because now, oh, now the smoke and mirrors and the bullshit is gone. I actually have to track it. Oh, damn. I ain't buying it. <laughs> um, that hurts. Yeah. Okay. I'd rather stay in my busyness. And so I'm not getting this mastery journal. But if you, <laughs> but if you actually say, no, you know what? I, I have been in my busyness and I need to be in my business. That, you know, tracking it is a vitally important piece. Let's go to the next one. Discipline. So discipline again, just like with productivity, we want to produce. With discipline, I want to go to disciple. You as an individual need to be a disciple to your plan of action. So if you are going to be a disciplined person, and Dove, this is really where I thrive with my military background right. and then producing a seven-day-a-week podcast now for the last four and a half years. Like I have mastered discipline to the nth degree. So I know what it takes to wake up in the morning, to craft a plan of action, and then to execute upon that plan. That is being disciplined. If you are a disciple to crafting a plan and then executing upon that plan, you will become disciplined. It's people that just flow down the river of life, Dove, and they wake up, you know, figuratively 20 years later, like, how did I get here? Yes. Like, why am I still in this cubicle, somebody else's bitch, you know, excuse the language? Well, okay. because you've been flowing along in the river of life this entire time. It's those people like yourself and myself, Dove, who ripped ourselves off of that, out of that river, climbed up onto the bank. It was a scary place because, you know, that water was warm and cozy and just felt like a bath. And we got out, it's freezing, it's cold, there's no shelter. But guess what we did? We ripped ourselves out and to survive outside of that warm river of just life or maybe, you know, being, well, we won't even go there, but <laughs> to survive, yeah. we developed a plan and then we executed upon that plan. So if you are able and willing to be disciplined, you're going to make that progress that you need to do to become your own boss, to have that freedom in life that now I have, Dove have, and so many other successful entrepreneurs have. So discipline, create a, create a plan, execute that plan. So let's just, let's address that one for a minute because I think that this is a, vitally i mean i think all three of them are vitally important but i want to sort of nail in on this one because i think there's a lot of illusions about discipline uh, you know well i'm just not a disciplined person and john is he was in the military so you know i'm listening to you dove i'm listening to john but i'm just not like you guys i'm not a disciplined person do you think it's possible for somebody who thinks they're not disciplined to become disciplined without Entering the military, what I mean by that is without somebody else ramming it down your throat. I mean, if you're going to join the army, you're going to come out or, or the, the, the services, 
you're going to come out with a level of discipline, whether you're a disciplined person or, or not going in. If you're a naturally disciplined person, you go in, you're going to come out very disciplined. If you're kind of off, you're going to still get some discipline. But what about those folks who are saying, I'm just not a disciplined person and, and holding themselves to that. That, that's a, that can be the real grind for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, number one, I will admit the army was a big benefit for me coming out. The discipline that I was that was instilled upon me was great. But on the other hand, like, listen, I'll say I knew people in the military to this day who were more disciplined than me when they started the military, were more disciplined than me when they got out. But they were just sick of discipline in, in any way, shape, and form, and they went the completely opposite direction. And now, you know, they're just the least disciplined people I know, and that's fine if that makes so, them happy. Yeah. But guess what? That's not going to make them successful as a solopreneur, as an entrepreneur who's going to try to make their way in this world. We need to be disciplined to ourselves. So if you're one of those people like Dove is saying, it's maybe saying to yourself, well, I just I, – I'm not a, a disciplined person. You know, it's just never – it's never come naturally to me. Well, I can say this. It didn't come naturally to me. It didn't come naturally to a lot of people. What you're likely missing is a system and a plan to follow so that you can grow and craft your discipline on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, was Michael Jordan a good basketball player the first time he picked up a ball? Absolutely not. He drilled at it. Was Tiger Woods hitting hole-in-ones the first time he swung a golf club? These people worked at their craft. I worked on my craft. Everybody, you know, Dove was not an amazing speaker from stage the first time he stepped up on stage. We all had to work and hone our craft. And so if you want the benefits of choosing freedom and what that means, then guess what? You're going to have to put the time, energy, effort to learn a system like I've laid out for you within the Mastery Journal because after 100 days, you will have mastered discipline. And from that point forward, what you do with that, you know, it's up to you. Maybe you want to go through another 100 days to really hammer it home again or maybe you're good or maybe you found some other thing that works for you but you have to have this, find a system that actually gets you moving that direction and execute upon that. The, the third part of the, the, uh, the Mastery Journal is around focus. <clears throat> and I think it's important that we put it in third, in, in third order because, I, God, we are distracted. We are so distracted. And we've got so many callings to that, meaning, you know, uh, social media, you know, your phone. I mean... If I'm not careful, I have to put my phone away at dinner or, or in a restaurant. <laughs> I just have to put it away because, you know, if my notifications are on, it flashes as a Twitter, it flashes as a LinkedIn. You know, if you're on Snapchat, if you're on any of those things, I mean, that stuff is calling to you constantly as a distraction. And let, now let's just go back in time. Let's go back less than 20 years. There is no phone. And if we ask that guy, is there a lot of stuff calling to you? That person, is there a lot of stuff calling to you? He, will, he, will, he, she will say, God, man, there's so much. There's my job. There's my boss. There's my coworkers. There's those that I lead. The pager. There's, there's, oh, the, the the, there's a pager. <laughs> the buzzer on my side. There's, yeah. there's, there's my partner in life. There's my children. You know, so there's always been a lot. So now it's just insane, insane amount of things pulling us away from focus. Talk to us about what focus is in the context of of what you uh, put forward in the Mastery Journal. Okay, so my favorite word in the world is focus. I am absolutely positive. That's why I've been able to take EO Fire from nothing four years ago to a multi-million dollar year business. And that acronym for the word focus, again, my favorite word is follow one course until success. Focus. That's allowed me to do what I've done with EO Fire and the multi facets. You know, there's the podcast is one thing. I've created a podcasting community. I've written the book, The Freedom Journal. I've written a book called Podcast Launch. I've launched all these different things that have all taken incredible focus one thing at a time. So I've followed one course until success. Now, we live in this crazy world of 2017, Dove. As you mentioned, Weapons of mass distraction, they are everywhere. There's yeah. so many things that are happening to us. So I'm a realist. I, I set the mass people that have the mastery journal, like I have set you up to win. Like you will win because I'm not just thinking, hey, you need to just block off your entire day to do one thing. That's never going to work. No. So during my studies, what I have found is the best thing to do when it comes to focus and I tested it on myself then with the entire beta group with the mastery journal and it was unbelievable the results 
you have to commit to what is called the Pomodoro Technique. This is a scientifically proven system that works and I have crafted it into the Mastery Journal. So basically, within the Mastery Journal, you have four sessions of focus. That's it. And for some people, and I say this at the beginning of the Mastery Journal, you're not gonna be able to do all four of those sessions every single day. If you have a side job, aim for two. You know, if you don't, try to do two in the morning and two in the afternoon. And these sessions, Dove, they're short. We're talking either 25, 35, at most 45 minutes of what I call focus time. So you have one task. You write down, this session I am focused on X. And then for those 45 minutes, for those 35 minutes, however long that you choose, you have put off all your distractions. And just for that time, and by the way, the key part of this is you have to have this time. There has to be a timer clicking down. It mentally shifts your brain into another level when you know that you are on the clock, period. It just it's, it's a reality. So you set that timer. You focus on that one session for that X number of minutes that you've pre-chosen. And then when that buzzer goes off, you're done. And now what do you do? You move into a refresh time. And that refresh time is huge, Doug. Like this is where you jump on the and the uh, this is where you jump on Facebook or maybe your emails real quick or check Facebook or do any of like those little things that like you always want to be doing because that just like hits the dopamine in our brain. But you're rewarding yourself with that after you're done your focus session. So by setting up and by setting up your day and using and utilizing the Pomodoro technique, you will be able to focus on one thing for some of us the first time in our lives for not ever, for again, 25, 35, 45 minutes, but in that section of time, you will get more done on that one focused topic than you would otherwise do on that one topic all week. It's just a reality, it happens, it's scary, and it's super exciting, because I just, I'm, I'm just so fired up for the changes this is gonna make in people's lives. You know, it, it, it's fascinating, because uh, I think you, you know, because we've talked before, but I've written at least eight books and ebooks and as well all kinds of stuff and people say how do you do that i mean you're so busy you've got so many things going on you've got your speaking career you work one-on-one -on -one mentoring you've got your podcast you write for all these different outlets how do you possibly do it and i go i can't do it and they go well you do do it and i go yeah i can do it and they go well how do you do it i have to block off time you've had kevin cruz on your show i love kev kev's a great guy and, you know, and I, he was on my show when we were talking about his book around productivity and around time management, right? And I said, Kev, I'm really excited about having you on this show. I mean, I'd known Kevin. We had had lots of chats before. So I'm really excited about having you on the show. And he goes, why? And I said, because it's on time management and I'm crap at time management. I'm excited <laughs> to have you on. And, and he says, oh, really? Okay. So we start doing the show. And at the end of the show, I said, I want to thank you, Kev. It was great having you on. Really great tips. And I said, but I want to thank you for something else. And he goes, what's that? I said, I discovered I'm not crap at time management. And he goes, <laughs> what, what do you mean? I said, because I had a picture in my head about what time management actually looked like, and it was it's probably from the early 90s. And the truth is that I do exactly what you say, which is blocking time and yes. sticking to blocks of time. Because if I don't do that, it might, people look at my calendar and go, you, you, your, your life is so busy. Yeah. No, it's blocked. blocked. It's blocked. That's all it is. So in my calendar, it actually says – lunch in my calendar it actually says break in break it says brain break which is what you're talking about it says yeah, brain break right i can screw around on facebook or i can mess around making a, a meme it, it says gym people go you go to the workout every day yeah it has to be in my schedule because if it's not my assistant will fill it with an appointment <laughs> so it's that drink prove it <laughs> exactly so it's yeah, exactly drink your ketosis drink but it's that understanding of blocking time, and I, I really don't think people understand the value of that. And what you're saying there about it's not big chunks, 25, 35, 45 minutes, then reward yourself, phenomenal. It, it makes all the difference in the world. These are, now, so these are the three main pieces that, you're, that it's all about. Yeah. But then we want to come to expectations because I think people have some, I know I've done it myself, crazy ass expectations on themselves and when they don't reach those, reach those expectations there's a tendency to want to throw in the towel talk to us about expectations because you speak about that in, in the certainly the beginning of the mastery journal so expectations are something that i think people a lot of times make the mistake of before they even start because they just have these expectations of 
you know, either, whether it's with the Freedom Journal, with that number one goal just being so massive that, you know, they're, they're going to try to accomplish in, in 100 days, you know, or they just set their expectations too low and they just say, you know, like, hey, like, I'm going to write the first chapter of my book in 100 days. And there's actually a great quote by Peter Diomedes that he said, you know, like, what's your what's your 10 year goal? And then like he would have people answer that question. He was like, what's stopping you from, from uh, completing that in six months? And people are just like, huh, now that you say that and I'm thinking about it, it would be an unbelievably difficult challenge, but what? why do I have to wait 10 years for this? You know, why, why can't I maybe compress that down to six months or a year? So expectations are huge because if you, again, set the wrong expectations at the beginning, you're kind of putting the cart before the horse and you could be in a whole heap of a lot of trouble. So for me, I really wanted to guide people with the Mastery Journal and say, listen, this is what your expectations should be as you go through here. You know, that's why it's 100 days. With every every 10 days, we do this 10-day recap, uh, where we're looking back over what was accomplished to identify the successes so we can amplify those successes. We can also identify our, our mistakes and our problems and our obstacles so that we can maybe adjust, pivot, or just, you know, stop dealing with those things because they're just dragging us down like an anchor. So the expectations have to be there from day one about what you want this to do, what you want this to be. And then it's your finger on the pulse every step of the way from that point. It's every single day you're going through this process. Every single night you're going back with the recaps and you're saying, hey, what is going to make this, what is going to make tomorrow that better day? And that's actually a good part for me to bring up. What I'm almost most excited about is at the end of every single day, I have the section that's called win tomorrow today. Now, I believe that most people fail in every single day when they're trying to get stuff done because they wake up and they get off on that wrong on that wrong foot and that wrong start and that is they wake up without a morning routine already in place right. and that morning routine can adjust and mine adjusts and changes all the time depending on what I'm doing but every single night I win tomorrow today by writing out the five, seven, nine bullet points that I am going to be doing tomorrow when I first wake up so I don't wake up and just kind of like stumble around and be like, okay, what's the, what's the first thing? What should I do first? You're not going to make your best decision groggy, tired, you know, trying to trying to wake up. You're going to make your best decision when you're reflecting upon your day today and then what you want to accomplish tomorrow at the end of the day. So you win tomorrow today with that morning routine. That's the first thing that I have in every single day is a morning routine. But you fill that section in the night before in that win tomorrow today section. So that's what I'm really excited about. And it all comes back to just, you having the right expectations and then executing upon them. So I'm going to do your thing and ask you, what's your morning routine? Yeah, my morning routine, pretty, again, I, it changes a pivot yeah, from time think, to time a little bit, but there's things that are always there within this I morning routine. I call these foundations. Yeah. Wake up in the morning, anywhere between 6 and 6.15 a.m. after eight hours of sleep at least. I'm big on sleep. I love sleep. I'm obsessed with it. Um, the first thing I do is hit my gym. I have my little in-house gym here, and I do 2,000 meters of rowing. So it gets the blood, it gets gets the blood flowing. It's the full body workout, which I love. I finish that up with some pull-ups, some push-ups, and then I'm kind of like got my little mini early day workout done. Right. Then I'm up in the shower. I'm getting all cleaned up, sitting down, and the first thing I'm doing before anything else, even before my computer goes on, seven minutes of meditation. And you can see that little thing on my uh, table right behind me. That's a that's a, it's called Muse, which goes around your forehead and it just oh, yeah. kind of flips around your ears and it measures your brain waves as you're meditating. And I use that Chase Lounge right there nice. to hang out on when I'm meditating. I do a seven minute meditation with Muse so I know how I'm actually doing um, meditation wise. And it, nice. you get your meditation score after every single session that you do. Then I journal for at least five minutes and I use the Mastery Journal now because. Right now, I'm focused on improving my productivity, discipline, and focus. You know, if I have a big goal that I'm working towards, then I'm using the Freedom Journal. But right now, I'm using the Mastery Journal to really get into discipline, productivity, and focus intraday. Then and only then does my computer go on. So I've already done all those things for me. Yes. Now I turn my computer on. So let's just stop for a minute because I think sure. that this is where people get off track. We are, again, I said this at the beginning, we are pulled in a thousand different directions and a thousand different demands. However, I've said a million times to people, if you imagine <clears throat> that you're in LA, I'm in LA, <clears throat> and I say, I wanna go to New York, and you go, great, I'm going to New York, 
and you say you say to me, would you like a ride? I'd love a ride. We get in your car and there's no gas in the tank. Where the hell are we going? <laughs> Nowhere. You got to fill your own tank first. No matter how much you want to help people, how much you want to give me a ride, we ain't going anywhere till you fill your tank. And I think that <clears throat> what you just said there is vitally important for people to grasp. Like you just heard John say, he fills his own tank first before the computer goes on. How many of you wake up and the very first thing you do is check your phone? Damn, you're already dead in the water. You're already, your brain is, the part of your brain is working that needs to not work yet because it stops you having access to what you need to have access to. So I really want to thank you for bringing that home to people that you fill your own tank first. Vital. And I think you'll, I think you'll love this, Doug, because it's right on that point. If you don't do that, what Doug and I were just explaining, you're doing what I call OPN. You're in other people's agenda. When you check your phone, your email inbox, when you go onto Facebook and you see messages, you are already on other people's agenda. That's people asking you to put out fires for them. That's people asking of you, asking you questions. Can you do this? Can you do that? You are putting out other people's fires. And guess what? You have to do that at some point during the day. I get that. Like that's part of your business. Like I have to work with people. I have to answer emails. I have to do all these things. Like that's part of what we do as business owners and entrepreneurs. But don't use the best part of you, of your day, doing those things. So I spend the mornings filling up my gas tank. And then when I do turn my computer on, the first thing I do is my first focus session before anything else. So that 45-minute block that I have of a focused task, that's my best work that I will do all day long because I just spend the entire morning exercising, hydrating, meditating, journaling, computer, focus task. What's that first focus task? And whatever I do during that 45 minutes, it's my best work of the day. Then I take an 18 minute refresh break and then I'm going into session two. What is that next thing I'm going to do? And that's going to be a great session too. Probably a little bit less, but then after those two sessions, then I move into that big, okay, let me go into my inbox. Let me just flush that out because there's probably people waiting on answers for me, this and that. Let me get into Slack, into Asana. And I do that whole thing. And then I'm like, okay, time to refresh again. Try to fill that gas tank back up as much as possible. I'm never going to get back to that morning point, but I'm going to get as high as possible. And then I move into the final two sessions that I'm going to do that day. So that allows me four quality sessions. And again, that's 160 minutes. You know, That's not even four hours of work um, that I'm doing on that focus session. But man, is it quality. And it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. This is, this is really, really great stuff. And I cannot recommend the Mastery Journal enough. I think it's this is going to be powerful for people because, you know, I, I, excuse me, and forgive me because it's going to seem critical, but it's not meant to be. Um, the problem with it being called the Mastery Journal is you might think it's a journal, meaning, you know, I journal every morning. I have my journal right here, like you were saying, John, too. And, you know, and I write, and, and part of that is the place to go vomit to get the emotional <laughs> crap out of my system, whatever it is. You know, it's the morning, it's the evening, and sometimes it's in the daytime too, to get all that out. And that's an important catharsis. Is, but this is dis, this is different. The, the, the Mastery Journal is about, as you said, John, the productivity, the discipline, and the focus to move you forward. And, and it is a workbook. It is something that will move you forward in a, in a tremendous way. <clears throat> I was actually chatting to my wife about it this week, and I said, you know, um, we need to get you one as well to help you <laughs> because, you know, she's looking at my stuff, you know, and I'm saying, we need to get you one as well because this, this is really good for anybody. And we are people who work really hard. We do great work. We are very productive. And I've sa I say this in every presentation I do. I don't care where you are. There's another level. There's another level to take it to. You just said yourself, John. You are using the mastery journal now. You're, you know, you're, you're the master of these things, and you're going, oh, i got to come back to this. You know, Every I, day. And the analogy I give to people all the time is this. I, I sat on the beach in Mexico <clears throat> very recently, but this has happened several years ago. And I'm sitting on the beach. I'm just sitting there, and I'm actually meditating. I go out first thing in the morning. I watch the sunrise, and I meditate when I'm on the beach. And I'm sitting on the beach, and I'm meditating, and I'm taking it all in. And this guy comes and sits next to me. It's a bench thing by the beach. And he comes and sits next to me, and he's sitting there, and he's, and he's noticed I'm meditating, so he's quiet. And then I open my eyes, and I notice he's there, and I say, good morning. And he says, good morning. And he looks at me, and he smiles, and he says, do you work out? <laughs> 
To which point I want to crack up. And I said, uh, so I, I did, I'm, I'm me. So I said, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm built. I have a build, right? I've been working out for 40 years. And he says, oh, really? And I said, no, of course I work out. I said, this doesn't <laughs> happen. You don't wake up and suddenly you're in shape. And he goes, oh, wow. He goes, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm too old for that. And I said, how old are you? He told me he's younger than me. Like the guy was in his late 40s. I'm in my <laughs> late 50s. He was younger than I am. But he figured I was younger than him. But it's this, it's this thing. And, and he said to me, how do you do it? And I said, how do you not? I, have, I understand that this, this bill, this physique is going away if I stop taking care of it. Whatever you build in your life is always subject to atrophy, whether it's muscles or whether it's a business or whether it's a, your loving relationship. I, I, there's never a day goes by that I haven't told my wife I love her, I appreciate her, and I'm grateful for her, and specific things I'm loving, grateful for, and Every single day. Why? It's only been 20 years because <laughs> she can go anytime she wants. My relationship can atrophy. And I think that this is a really good point that you're bringing home, John, for people to grasp Thank you. in that you're doing it, is that everything is subject to atrophy. Everything can, can waste away. So you've got to bring yourself back. And I think it's a really powerful point. And I want to thank you for being the guest on the show today. What you've shared is poignant, it's important, it's vital, not only to entrepreneurs, but to leaders in any form, whether you're a leader of a C, uh, CEO, whether you're a leader of a group, a community, a family, an entrepreneur, whatever it is, you need this. You need more focus, you need more discipline because you want to be productive. And yeah. I really want to encourage you to grab a hold of this. Before we sign out, John, I'm gonna, I am going to sign out and I hope you'll stay with me right to the very end and I'll, and I'll chat with you at the end. But I want to thank you for being on the show. I want to really appreciate that. I want you to tell, remind our people where they can find out more about the Mastery Journal, where they can find out more about EO on Fire, or whatever it is that you want to tell them. Sure. Well, well first, first off, Doug, thanks for all this. I had a great time chatting with you today. And I know your audience is a bunch of action takers, which is super cool. And to your point, you know, you're right. I mean, the word journal is sexy, and that's why it's called the Mastery Journal. But this puppy right here, this is a workbook. If you're not able and willing to put in the work, don't even do it because it's not going to do anything for you. This is a workbook that's going to guide you in mastering productivity, in mastering discipline, in mastering focus in 100 days. It's beautiful. It's faux leather. It's silver. It's got all the tools for you. But if you're not willing to work, it's not going to do it for you. So don't even bother. But if you are willing to work, themasteryjournal.com is the place to go. During our Kickstarter campaign, January 23rd to February 24th, um, that's going to take you there. You're going to be able to watch an amazing video that we have. All these great rewards are on that page. If you're watching this after February 24th, that same URL is going to take you to the website, which is going to have the same information as well where you can learn more, themasteryjournal.com. Thanks, Dove. Appreciate it. It's been great having you here, mate. It really has. And, and I, like I said, I think there's a lot of value here. I say this at the end of every single show, and I think it's important for everybody. Listen, I understand podcasts are played in the background, and you might be listening to this while you're doing 14 other things in that bloody multitasking world we live in. <laughs> but listen, folks, you got to listen back. Take out a pen, take out a paper, write shit down, and put it in action. Because, listen, information Without action is worth the hole in the donut. It's worth nothing. So your act, transformation takes place because of action. Please, please, please take action on what we've shared with you today. It's been great having John Lee Dumas here with us. And again, make sure that you check out his podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire. Just plug that into Google. It, there's like 57 versions of it and all kinds <laughs> of great things around it. John is a superstar. Get yourself over there. Check it out. If you, on the other hand, if you... Uh, are truly serious about finding the kind of laser beam clarity and focus to connect you to your purpose and really creating leaders inside of your organization, not into only who they want to be, but who they need to be to take the next generation of leadership in, underhand and make your people fiercely loyal, then reach out to me. You can find me at fullmontyleadership.com. Fullmontyleadership.com. You can also, of course, check out the Matrix at matrix.fullmontyleadership.com. 
and that's free to you. It's $197 value. You can check it out. So please do that. I want to thank you for joining us here. Remember to share the show with everybody that you know. And remember, we always need your help in staying relevant. So get yourself over to iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe to the show. Until next time, my name is Dov Barron. And I want to say, stay curious, my friends. Stay curious about how you can reach what it is that you're going for by getting a little more focused, a little more disciplined, and aiming for your productivity. Till next time, this is Dove Barron, and I am out.